Hello and welcome to another tutorial of JavaScript. In this tutorial, we'll be learning how to work with for loops. When working with for loops, let's go back to the starting point as we started out with. For loop is considered to be a preconditioned loop. It's a finite loop. And generally speaking, it is used as a count control loop because it works greatest as a count control loop. And you will going to see in a minute how efficient a for loop is. And as you can see over here, that it also has a starting point, it has a process which tells you how to get to the end point, and it has an end point which is a condition, which in most cases is a count control condition. Now we'll keep the same problem intact. However, when you are doing your for loop, you can minimize your code extremely simple, and you start your for loop, it's a precondition loop, you start at the beginning of the body, and you don't, do not even have to initialize a variable beforehand. You can even do the initialization inside the loop. You can mention the ending condition inside the loop. And you can mention the direction of how to go towards the end inside the loop. So as you can see, the for loop is a lot simpler than while or a do while loop. It not only allows you to declare a variable, it also allows you to declare the variable inside. So you can even shorten your code further if you want to do that. So it allows you to declare the variable, initialize it inside the loop. It allows you to put the ending condition inside the loop. It allows you to put the increment or the decrement statement inside the loop. Everything goes inside the loop in one place. And as we have learned in the past, if a body has only one statement, parentheses, so curly braces becomes optional. Now we're going to transform the second loop the same way. However, here it's a reverse loop, so what we're going to be doing is we'll be starting from 10. As long as it is greater than 1, and come down by decrement. As a result, I do not need any of these statements now, and since there's only one statement in the loop, I don't have to put the parentheses around. Even if you do, it will not get a complaint, as we have seen back in the if condition, but here you go, the same two loops written down in for loop. So let's click run and run this in a browser. And you will going to notice that you get exact same outputs. And as you can see, it is a lot simpler than the first two loops. So it's, it's, it's the first choice of the programmer when it comes to the count control loops. Well, hope you enjoyed this video as well. Catch you in the next tutorial with nested loops.